and we have our own and we need that because we cannot we cannot serve God fully without the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that will lead us. Uh, three weeks ago, if you, I don't know if you know about this, in Oklahoma, there was a satanic mass. It's very interesting because this is how they do it. Uh, you were asking, why is there a satanic mass in Oklahoma? Well, that's not just that. They were even asking to put an, uh, a symbol of Satan in the uh, Capitol building. Uh, and the picture is a goat with a pentagram, silicone. And there were two kids admiring the goat with big horns. And they said, well, if you have a cross in the Capitol building, and you, if you have the Jewish uh, David, David star, why can we not have, this is our religion, why cannot we have the devil there? And so to prove their point, three weeks ago, September 22, or 21, 22, in the Civic Center, this is a public building, 40 to 50 people actually went to worship the devil. It was well publicized. It's called a black mass. Their, uh, uh, the name of their pastor was uh, Daniel Adams, I think. He was wearing red with black as a priest. And uh, they were celebrating the mass with worshiping the devil, of course. And they were saying, why is it that whenever you Christians go to church... You malign my God. Isn't that true? We talk bad about the devil. That's something like, that's actually a praise to him. <laughs> so, yeah, if you malign my God, I should have my right also to express this. And so because of religious, uh, you know, because of uh, freedom of expression, then he, there he's expressing himself. So 40 people came in and they worship, they worship the devil. They did their thing. They have a false, uh, they have a fake, uh, the body of Christ, the works. And in the end, they had uh, an altar call. Can you believe that? He's probably a former Pentecostal preacher or something. I hope not. And so he called people to come over. And they came to be prayed for. You know what, he, what was the prayer? They were praying to get rid of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the people. Now, when we call you guys, we pray for that the spirit of the enemy may come out of you, right? Or when we, they pray for us, when you come over to the altar, Lord Jesus, take out the works of the devil in my life. This one is, in the name of Lucifer, we command this Holy Spirit to get out of the lives of these people. Wow, that is like, and we, we laugh. We, you know, like, oh, it's so funny. But guess what? That's how holy, what the Holy Spirit wants to work in our lives. We may not be going there, you know, saying, uh, can you get rid of the Holy Spirit? But when we reject the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing because the devil understands you can be the Christian all you want, but just don't be empowered, please. Just don't be empowered. You can worship the, all you want. You can say hallelujah and praise the Lord. But do not receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a difference between infilling and indwelling. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Bible, you cannot be saved without the Holy Spirit. Every day you have to have the Holy Spirit. But Jesus is talking about being filled, infilled by the Holy Spirit. This is different from being saved. Remember, salvation is the, uh, is the uh, feast of the uh, spring harvest. Salvation is Passover, unleavened bread, and the first fruit. That's salvation. And that's done. We're done with that. The Holy Spirit has nothing to do with salvation on the infilling. He is saying, you will be my witnesses so that there will be a lot of gathering in the feast of ingathering. Can you see? You are already gathered. You are already my first. I'm the first fruit. Inani ko na kayo. You're now the wheat. But I'm looking for a greater harvest at the end. On the day of Sukkah, on the day of the great ingathering, I want you to be empowered. You'll be my witness because the days... On the last days, it will be so evil that you cannot do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit, and the devil is saying, no, no, you don't need him. All you need to do is to keep praying and stay there, read your Bible, go to church. Have you ever tried to witness that it doesn't work? That the person actually is a better evangelist than you are? I hope you accepted the Lord again, but this one, he actually changed your mind. But you need the Holy Spirit for that, amen? In... <clears throat> In a, where am I now? And it says in here, and when the day of Pentecost arrived, 
they were all together. The Holy Spirit came as a wind, and then there was a fire. And I was, I was praying like, Lord, when I was preparing this message, gee, Lord, I, I cannot close this. You know, when you come up with a movie, meron dapat yan climax, right? Wow, look at that. Where's the fire? What? I got my first offering. Oh, by the way, my commercial. Let me just say this. The Lord has been touching me this. And remind me about this, Acts chapter 2. Monday, uh, the Lord said, I should pray for people to get money. There's an extra money coming. Who got something within this week? Something that you did not expect. It's not regular with your paycheck. So we have two or three people, four. Well, it's still money. Amen. Guess what? I was working. I was working. So there's like four of us now. I was working to, uh, like, uh, when was it? Uh, fr- what is today now? Friday. And the supervisor said, Robert, can I uh, come over here? And this is not a problem. I just have something to tell you. And then our timekeeper just came in and, and, and gave me a check. And this, I was expecting a check, not today, because it's been late for five months. But this was double the check I was expecting. I said, what was that? You know? Uh, praise, I was appreciated there as an associate pastor already <laughs> before you hear. But I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is the Lord does bless. Amen. And, and, and when, when prophecies like that say, just, just go ahead and claim it. Oh, that's me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now let's go back here. That's my testimony there. Uh, there's another one. The Lord will bring it back to me. So it looks like I need to release a message here. Oh, yes. The angelic encounters. Anybody? Something you encounter something weird. Pastor, you're the one being weird. Anyway, the Holy Spirit came. There was a wind, right? And there was the fire. And I said, God, I cannot clench this message. And last night saying, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying. You know, it you can just study as much as you could. And this is just how, how far your brain could take you. And I said, Lord, Bahala I say, I will do what I can, and I did what I could. This will all be academic if you do not move. And then he showed me, you know why there was the wind and the tongues of fire? Always interpret the Bible in the light of the Bible. And this is what he showed. The Israelites crossed the Red Sea because there was this mighty wind. It separated that thing. Amen? So that they can go to the water and be baptized. The Bible said they were baptized in Moses. But there was the wind. And then that was the Holy Spirit. And then what about the fire? And I said, the fire is the glory of God. You know, remember when the, Moses saw the fire, the burning bush, what was that about? It was God. When they were worshiping, when they had the Mishkan, the tent, when they built the tent, what made it, what made it different from the rest of the tent? The Shekinah glory on the Mishkan, which is the fire of God. Amen. If there's no fire, that tent is just another tent. And if the glory of God is not in Israel, they're just going camping. But because the glory was there, it came, that became a nation. It became a nation in transition to a promised land. And so the same thing, you know, what makes something holy? It's the glory of God. What makes heaven heaven? Because God in his glory is there. If if heaven is heaven and God is not there, that, is, that doesn't make it heaven. That just makes it, you know, a celestial place. And, and the Lord is just saying, when I place the fire, the tongues of fire on top of them, they have become the temples. The temples whereby I dwell. Now, I was looking at history. Moses had a temple. David wanted to build a temple. Solomon built the best temple. And he has the Ark of the Covenant, the works, gold shields and everything. And the Babylonians came and Nebuchadnezzar took everything. Kinuha Nilimas niya lahat. He took everything to Babylon. And then eventually King Cyrus said, oh, God is touching me. Why don't you go ahead and build your temple again? So he did, but the Ark of the Covenant was not found. There was no Ark of the Covenant. Did you know that during the time of Herod, until the time of Jesus, there was a Holy of Holies? Remember the whole the worship that we were talking to you. Though they will offer as incense, it will go over there and it will become a smoke to cover the the ark of the covenant, to cover the uh, the mercy seat, and then God will talk to them. There was no mercy seat. Alam mo pag sinilip mo, wala pa lang lamang to. Actually, 
actually, if you look in there, there is nothing behind the temple, the, the Holy of Holies. There's none. And they were offering the incense the whole time because the Ark of the Covenant is gone. The Ark of the Covenant is gone. The whole worship. That's why when Jesus died, the curtain was ripped open. It was shown. I will open on the manure. There was nothing. The glory has departed. The Ichabod, has, uh, Ichabod his glory has departed. But now the temple, remember, the temple eventually got destroyed at 69, uh, what's his name? That will be uh, Pompey, the general of, of Rome, came in where because the Jews were very stubborn. He took over the place, and at, uh, seven years after that, Crassus, another general, came in and took all the gold. Destroyed the temple. That's why when you go to Jerusalem or the temple place, you will still see the stones turned over. Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, not one stone will be left on another. Because he's saying this, ano na toy, obsolete na toy. Because there will be a temple. You will be a temple. It's confirmed when the Holy Spirit came. The Shekinah glory that came over the, the, the Mishkan, that fire is no longer there. It's on us now. That was Acts chapter 2. He is saying it's no longer in the Temple Mount. You know, it's so pitiful when you go to Israel. The Muslims are on top, and they're saying, we're holding on to this, and they actually showed us a picture of, of the Dome of the Rock, and it's, they, they're protecting a rock, and it's, it is a rock. Like any regular rock. And they're going to fight for that. Oh, this is a holy rock. And then the Jews are on the Wailing Wall, and they were saying, you know, if you stand right here, right there will be where the, the Ark of the Covenant will be. There's none. They were trying to restore what's been there, but the bus has come and gone. There's nothing to restore anymore. Because God is saying, you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are now what God is saying, the place where I will dwell and linger. Now look at that, uh, look at the uh, what the Bible is saying in, th- in regard to that. In uh, where is that thing? No, it's not there. I have so many papers. I'm gonna submit this someday. <laughs> I was actually hoping I had the clicker. Anyway, this is what the Bible is saying. When on the last of the of the of the event, Jesus said. Anyone who's thirsty, let him come to me. Remember that? Because if you come to me, rivers of living water will start flowing from you. Now, what is, what is he saying to that? He's saying there's no life in you. But the Bible said, he, when he promised that, he's saying, this, he's talking about the Holy Spirit that will be released after he's glorified. That's talking about the Holy Spirit baptism. He is saying, rivers of living water. Now, the Jews at this, Mahilig sila na tetawag na ano na, mikveh. They like moving waters. This is the one that will clean you. This is the one that will bring you life. Now, in the book of, uh, uh, I believe in Ezekiel, it talks about the living water coming from the temple of God, flowing down from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is actually a dry place. And it comes down the valley, uh, Kindron Valley, all the way down to the Dead Sea. And it says in there, every part where it flows, Trills will start to grow. And then the val- the Dead Sea, the place of the Dead Sea that says in there, the water that's so filled with salt, it will become teeming with life. And the Bible said, then people will start fishing. There will be people who actually live there and start fishing. What is the meaning of this? That if you just walk on and get a hold with the Pentecost of God, this flowing water that God is talking about, will be one with you and you'll become the source of encouragement. You'll become the source of life. You'll become the very source that you've been looking for. Hindi na, hindi ka na nagsasalok. You know, as a temple, and I was looking at, uh, you know, pagan temples, not that I want to worship pagan temples. Pagan temples are very enigmatic. Nakatago yan eh. Alam mo, itong mapa na to, if you just walk this way, Dr. Agate mo, uh, nalala ko sa Baguio, meron kaming grotto. I, have you been to Lord, Lourdes Grotto? It is so high to meet the sanctuary of the pagan God and worship there. But did you know God is not that? We as the temple, the Bible said he came and he walks amongst us. And we are that now. He's not hiding. Na, kung gusto mo talagang magkaroon ng anak, sumayaw ka dun sa ubando. 